I came to Mars looking for a fresh start, like many others before me. Earth had become an unforgiving place where dreams shriveled under corporate control. They sold us the vision of a new beginning on Mars, fertile soil, endless horizons, and freedom. The reality was different. The corporation ruled Mars with an iron grip, and they had little patience for those who didn't fit their mold. As a dropout, I quickly realized that their promises of prosperity were a mirage. I ended up in a small makeshift camp on the outskirts of the colony, where the corporation's reach was weaker. But even here, they cast a shadow over our lives. Life in the camp was a daily struggle. Water was rationed, food scarce, and every breath filled with Martian dust. The corporation's propaganda flooded our comms, painting a rosy picture of the colony's progress while we scraped by, scavenging for basic necessities. It was clear they didn't care about us. The resistance was a beacon of hope in the bleak Martian landscape. It was led by Joran, a man with an unbreakable spirit and a deep understanding of the corporation's tactics. He saw potential in every dropout, recruiting us with the promise of striking back against our oppressors. Reese was one of Joran's closest allies. A tech genius who could rig anything from a broken comm to an armored vehicle, Reese had a quick wit that kept us laughing even on the worst days. He was also fiercely loyal, always ready to put himself on the line for the cause. In those early days, the resistance was more about survival than striking back. We scavenged for scraps of intel and took any small win we could find. A raided supply depot or a successfully intercepted transmission was a victory. Joran drilled into us that every piece of information mattered, that it could one day tip the balance in our favor. I remember one night, huddled around a dim fire with Reese, Joran, and a few others. The cold Martian air bit through our thin suits. We talked about the future, the kind of world we wanted to build. One day, Joran said, we'll break the corporation's hold on this place. People will be free to live without fear. Reese smirked, poking at the fire with a stick. Yeah, we just need to find a way to break through all the lies. What about you, Cade? Joran asked, turning to me. What keeps you going? I thought about it for a moment. I want to see the truth come out. I want everyone to know what the corporation's really doing here. Joran nodded. Then we'll keep fighting until that happens. The resistance became my family, bound together by a shared vision of a better future. We knew the odds were against us, but we believed that together we could make a difference. But with each passing day, the corporation tightened its grip. They had more resources, more weapons, and more ways to keep us down. The retrievers, their elite enforcers, were always hunting us, looking to crush any hint of dissent. We had to stay one step ahead, constantly moving, never staying in one place for too long. As the weeks turned into months, it became clear that we needed more than just hope. We needed hard evidence to expose the corporation's lies. That's when Joran came up with a plan. He would gather a team to infiltrate one of the corporation's bases and retrieve the data we needed. Reese and I were chosen for the mission. I didn't know then just how much that decision would change my life. The camp buzzed with anticipation as we made our preparations. Everyone knew the risks, but there was a sense of excitement in the air. We had a chance to strike a real blow against the corporation. All we had to do was pull off the mission and get out alive. I remember the look Joran gave us before we left, a mix of determination and pride. Bring back the truth, he said, clasping my shoulder. For everyone out there who's counting on us. We all knew that the path ahead was fraught with danger. But in those moments, as we set out into the Martian night, the weight of the mission hadn't yet settled in. We were still dreaming of a world where the corporation's lies would no longer bind us. The raid on the corporation's base was going smoothly, or so it seemed at first. We had managed to slip past the outer defenses under the cover of a dust storm, and the guards were thin on the ground. The three of us, Joran, Reese, and I, crept through the compound's corridors using the maps that Reese had hacked together from intercepted transmissions. We reached the data center, a sterile, white-walled room filled with consoles. Reese quickly moved to one of the terminals, connecting a thumb drive to it. His fingers danced over the keys, pulling up files and transferring them to the drive. We're in, he muttered, a triumphant smile on his face. Joran stood watch by the door, his eyes scanning the corridor for any sign of movement. Make it quick, Reese. We've got to get out of here before anyone notices. I kept my rifle trained on the hallway, every nerve on edge. How much longer? I asked, glancing back at Reese. Almost done, he replied, tapping a few more keys. Just a few more seconds. Suddenly the lights flickered, and alarms blared throughout the building. Damn it, they're on to us, Joran shouted, raising his weapon. 
Reese yanked the thumb drive out of the console and stuffed it into his pocket. Let's move! We sprinted down the corridor, the sound of boots echoing behind us as the guards gave chase. The data center was deep within the compound, and it felt like miles before we reached the exit. Retrievers were closing in from every direction. Over there! Duran pointed to a side door, leading us into a narrow maintenance tunnel. This way! We stumbled through the tunnel, barely able to see in the dim light. The alarm still blared, and the sound of footsteps grew louder. I glanced back, catching sight of the retrievers rounding the corner behind us. Their armor gleamed in the flickering light, and they raised their rifles, firing at us. Keep moving! Reese yelled, shoving me forward. We burst out of the tunnel into the open air, the dust storm swirling around us. Duran motioned for us to head toward the rover we had parked outside the compound. The retrievers were right on our heels, their shots whizzing past us. Reese scrambled into the driver's seat and fired up the engine. Duran and I leaped into the back and the rover lurched forward, speeding away from the compound. They're still following us, Duran shouted, ducking down as bullets struck the metal frame. I'm trying. Reese gritted his teeth, swerving the rover to avoid a burst of gunfire. I grabbed my rifle and returned fire, forcing the retrievers to fall back. The chase continued for what felt like hours, but we eventually managed to lose them in the dust storm. We drove until the rover ran out of fuel and then continued on foot, trudging through the desolate Martian landscape. After what felt like an eternity, we found a cave to take shelter in. We huddled together in the dark, our breaths ragged and our bodies aching from the escape. Duran lit a small lamp, casting a dim glow over the rocky walls. Did you get it? Duran asked, turning to Reese. Reese pulled the thumb drive from his pocket and held it up. Yeah, I got it. Duran nodded, a faint smile appearing on his face. Good work. This is what we needed. I leaned back against the cave wall, the adrenaline finally starting to wear off. What now? Now we figure out how to get this to Earth, Duran said, his expression growing serious. The corporation won't stop until they've hunted us down, but we have to keep moving. Reese looked at the drive, his face thoughtful. The data on here, it's big, Cade. If we can get this to the right people, we can blow the lid off this whole colony project. The weight of the mission settled in. We had the evidence, but the journey to deliver it would be long and dangerous. We'll get it there, I said, my voice steady. We have to. We spent the next few hours catching our breath and planning our next move. We knew the corporation would be relentless in their pursuit, but we also knew that the fate of Mars depended on us getting that drive to Earth. With the data drive in hand, we couldn't afford to linger in the cave for long. We set out early, navigating the unforgiving Martian terrain moving under the cover of the dust storm to avoid detection by the retrievers. The ground was uneven, and each step was a struggle. But we kept moving forward, driven by the knowledge of what we were carrying. Reese took the lead, his familiarity with the terrain guiding us through the maze of rocky outcroppings. Duran brought up the rear, his rifle ready for any sign of pursuit. I stuck close to Reese, the data drive safely stowed in my pack. Think they'll find us? I asked, my voice barely audible over the howling wind. They'll try. Reese replied, not slowing his pace. But we'll be long gone before they get close. We just need to keep moving, Duran said, his voice steady despite the tension in the air. We've got to find Boz. He's the only one who can help us now. Boz was a smuggler with a reputation for getting people off Mars, no matter the obstacles. We had to reach his hideout before the retrievers closed in. We trudged through the wasteland for hours, the dust storm making it nearly impossible to see more than a few feet ahead. The cold cut through our suits, and each breath felt like inhaling shards of ice. We kept our heads down and our footsteps light, knowing the slightest sound could give away our position. As night fell, the storm began to clear, revealing a sky filled with stars. We found a small canyon to take shelter in and set up a makeshift camp. Reese pulled out a small heater from his pack and we huddled around it, grateful for the warmth. How much farther to Boz's place? I asked, my breath forming a mist in the cold air. Not much farther, Duran replied, rubbing his hands together to warm them. We should reach it by tomorrow night if we keep this pace. Reese nodded, his eyes fixed on the horizon. Let's hope he's in a good mood. We'll need all the help we can get. We ate a quick meal of ration bars and water before settling down for the night. I lay on the cold ground, my mind racing with thoughts of what lay ahead. The mission had only just begun and we were already on the run. In the early hours of the morning, we were jolted awake by the sound of engines in the distance. We scrambled to our feet, grabbing our packs and weapons. 
Retrievers, Joran hissed, his eyes scanning the horizon. We could see the beams of their searchlights cutting through the darkness, moving steadily toward us. We had to move fast. Follow me, Reese said, leading us deeper into the canyon. We ran through the narrow passageways, the sound of the engines growing louder behind us. The terrain was treacherous and several times we stumbled over loose rocks and debris, but we kept moving, driven by the fear of capture. After what felt like an eternity, we reached the end of the canyon emerging onto a flat plain. The retrievers were still behind us, but the searchlights had grown faint. We couldn't afford to stop, not even for a moment. There! Reese pointed to a ridge in the distance. Boz's hideout is just beyond that ridge. We ran toward the ridge, our breaths coming in ragged gasps. My legs ached with each step, but I forced myself to keep going. The thought of the data drive and what it meant kept me moving forward. As we reached the top of the ridge, we saw the faint outline of Boz's hideout nestled among the rocks. Relief washed over me, but it was quickly replaced by fear, as I heard the sound of engines approaching from behind. Come on! Duran shouted, urging us forward. We scrambled down the ridge, the rock slipping beneath our feet. Boz's hideout loomed ahead, a small, fortified building with heavy doors and thick walls. Reese pounded on the door, and after a moment it swung open to reveal Boz himself. Well, well, if it isn't the resistance, he said with a smirk. What brings you to my humble abode? No time to explain, Joran said, pushing past him. The retrievers are right behind us. Boz's eyes widened, and he quickly ushered us inside. I hope you've got a plan, he muttered, closing the door behind us, because they won't take long to find this place. We need to get off Mars, Reese said, his voice urgent. We have something they can't get their hands on. Boz raised an eyebrow but nodded. All right, I'll see what I can do. The tension was palpable as we huddled inside Boz's hideout. The walls were thick but not enough to block out the roar of the retriever's engines circling nearby. Boz motioned for us to follow him into a back room. He activated a panel on the wall, revealing a concealed stairway leading down into a dimly lit underground chamber. Let's talk down here, Boz said, leading the way. No prying ears. We descended the stairs into a cramped space cluttered with old tech and scavenged parts. Boz flicked on a lamp, casting shadows across the room. He turned to us, his gaze settling on Joran. What's this about? We've got something that can bring down the corporation, Joran said, pulling out the data drive. We need to get it to Earth, Boz crossed his arm, studying the drive. And you want me to get you off Mars? Yes, Joran replied. We'll pay whatever it takes. Boz raised an eyebrow. The corporation is out in full force, hunting for you. Getting you off this rock won't be easy. We don't have a choice, I said, my voice steady. We have to get this information out there. Boz sighed, rubbing his temples. All right, all right, I've got a ship leaving in two days. It's a risky flight, but if you're willing to take the chance, I'll smuggle you on board. What's the catch? Reese asked, his eyes narrowing. Boz chuckled. You don't trust me, huh? You've got a reputation, Reese said flatly. I want to know what we're getting into. The catch, Boz said, leaning back against the wall, is that you'll be packed in with the cargo. No amenities, no security. And if anything goes wrong, I won't hesitate to cut you loose. Joran nodded, his expression grim. We'll take it. Boz clapped his hands together. Good. Now you're going to lay low here until it's time to move. Don't make a sound and don't touch anything. We spent the next two days in the underground chamber, the silence only broken by the occasional rumble of the retrievers' patrols overhead. I paced the narrow space, the weight of the mission pressing down on me. Reese spent his time tinkering with some of Boz's old tech, while Duran remained focused, reviewing the data on the drive. On the morning of our departure, Boz gathered us in the back room. The coast is clear, he said, handing us each a battered suit. Put these on. You'll need them to blend in with the cargo. We changed into the suits, their coarse fabric scratching against my skin. Boz led us out of the hideout and through the rocky terrain to where his ship was docked. The ship was small and looked like it had seen better days, its exterior rusted and patched up with mismatched metal plates. Not much to look at, Boz admitted, but she'll get you where you need to go. We climbed aboard, making our way to the cargo hold. Boz pointed to a stack of crates. Find a spot between those. Keep your heads down and don't make a sound. We squeezed into the narrow space, wedging ourselves between the crates. Boz gave us a nod before sealing the hatch. I could hear him shouting orders to his crew as they prepared for takeoff. The ship's engines roared to life and soon we were lifting off the Martian surface. The journey was anything but smooth.
The ship shuddered and groaned, its patched-up hull barely holding together. I could feel every jolt and bump as we broke through the planet's atmosphere. I clenched my fists, willing myself to stay calm. Reese glanced at me, a faint smile on his lips. Don't worry, Cade. Boz knows what he's doing. Joran was less optimistic. We need to be ready for anything. If the corporation gets wind of us... His words were drowned out by a sudden burst of static from the intercom. Boz's voice crackled through the speakers. We've got company. Hang on. The ship veered sharply and I was thrown against the crates. The data drive pressed painfully into my ribs, a constant reminder of what was at stake. Brace yourselves, Boz shouted. We're going to have to make a run for it. The ship bucked and groaned, its engines struggling against the corporation's interceptors. Boz was trying every evasive maneuver he knew, but the retrievers were relentless. The cargo hold was pitch black except for the faint glow of emergency lights, and every jolt sent us crashing into the crates around us. Stay down, Joran shouted, his voice barely audible over the roar of the engines. They'll hit us any second. I tightened my grip on the nearest crate, my heart pounding. The ship lurched violently to the left, throwing me into Reese. He grunted, clutching his side, but managed a grim smile. Just another day in paradise, huh? Boz's voice crackled through the intercom, barely audible over the chaos. Brace yourselves, they're firing! The ship shook as the first round of fire hit, sending crates tumbling around us. A loud screech filled the hold as something tore through the hull, sending a rush of cold air into the chamber. I could hear the shriek of the wind mixed with the sputtering of the engines. Boz! Joran shouted into the intercom. What's happening? They're tearing us apart. Boz's voice was strained, the panic evident. We're going down. The ship continued to veer erratically, its hull groaning under the assault. I clung to the nearest crate, my breath coming in ragged gasps. We were going to crash, and there was nothing we could do about it. Hold on, Reese shouted, grabbing my arm as the ship made a sharp turn. The impact came suddenly with a deafening roar. The cargo hold tilted violently and I was thrown across the space, crashing into a pile of crates. The world spun around me, and for a moment, everything went black. I came to with Reese shaking me, his voice a distant murmur in the chaos. Kate, Kate, wake up! I blinked, trying to focus on his face. Reese, we've got to move, he said, his voice urgent. The ship's breaking apart. I struggled to my feet, the ground swaying beneath me. Joran was already at the hatch, his rifle slung over his shoulder. Come on, we've got to get out of here before they finish us off. We stumbled through the wreckage, Boz's frantic voice echoing through the intercom. There's an escape pod near the front. Get to it. We moved as quickly as we could, the ship's hull creaking and groaning around us. The air was thick with smoke and I could barely see a few feet ahead. We reached the escape pod, a small cramped space barely large enough for the three of us. Boz was already inside, frantically working the controls. Hurry up, he shouted, motioning us inside. We don't have much time. We squeezed into the pod, the door slamming shut behind us. The engine sputtered to life, and with a shudder, the pod detached from the ship. I felt a moment of weightlessness before we were flung forward, the force of the acceleration pinning me to my seat. Where are we going? Joran shouted over the roar of the engines. Anywhere but here, Boz replied, his voice strained. The pod hurtled through space, the stars streaking past us. I clutched the seat, my knuckles white, as we spiraled toward the surface of Mars. The retrievers were still behind us, their weapons trained on our tiny vessel. They're closing in, Reese shouted, his face pale. Boz's fingers flew over the controls. Hold on, we're going to land hard. The pod shuddered as we hit the atmosphere, the heat burning through the hull. The world outside was a blur of fire and smoke as we hurtled toward the surface. I could feel the air rushing past, the heat searing my skin. The impact was brutal, the pod slamming into the ground with a deafening crash. I was thrown forward, my head hitting the console. The world spun around me and for a moment everything went dark again. When I came to, the pod was filled with smoke, and I could hear the faint sound of voices outside. Joran was beside me, shaking my shoulder. Cade, we've got to move. I blinked, trying to focus on his face. What? What happened? The retrievers, he said, his voice grim. They've found us. We stumbled out of the pod, the Martian dust swirling around us. The retrievers were closing in, their weapons trained on us. Boz and Joran opened fire, holding them back as best they could. Reese grabbed my arm, pulling me away from the wreckage. Come on, Cade, we've got to get out of here. We ran through the dust storm, the sound of gunfire echoing behind us. The ground was uneven and I could barely see a few feet ahead. 
but we kept moving, driven by the knowledge that we had to survive. The dust storm was our salvation, its thick haze cloaking us as we fled the crash site. We moved swiftly, sticking to the rocky terrain to avoid being detected by the retrievers. My head pounded, still reeling from the crash, but the adrenaline kept me going. We had no choice but to find a way to Earth. Everything depended on it. Boz led us to a nearby hideout, a small bunker concealed beneath a rocky overhang. It was stocked with basic supplies and communication equipment, probably one of many safe houses Boz used. We huddled together inside, catching our breath. What's our next move? Reese asked, his voice strained. Boz took a moment to catch his breath. We need another ship, he said. I have a contact in one of the smaller colonies. He's got access to a cargo freighter headed to Earth. How far is it? Joran asked. Not far, Boz replied. But it's going to be a dangerous trip. The retrievers won't give up easily. We spent the night in the bunker, taking turns keeping watch. The bunker felt too small, the walls closing in as we tried to rest. I couldn't shake the tension in my gut, the knowledge that we were still in danger. The data drive was tucked safely in my pack, and I found myself checking it repeatedly as if to reassure myself it was still there. The next morning, Boz led us through the barren landscape to the colony. We kept to the shadows, avoiding the main roads. The colony was a sprawling network of domed habitats and mining facilities, its inhabitants living under the constant watch of the corporation. Boz took us to a nondescript warehouse on the outskirts of the colony. This is the place, he said, knocking on the metal door. After a moment, a grizzled man opened the door, eyeing us suspiciously. What do you want, Boz? the man asked, his voice rough. We need passage off Mars, Fen, and we need it now, Boz said. Fen's eyes narrowed. You're asking for a lot. The corporation's got eyes everywhere. Boz handed Fen a small bag. This should cover it. Fen glanced inside the bag and nodded. All right, follow me. He led us through the warehouse to a small office in the back. He punched in a code on the wall, revealing a hidden door. We stepped through into a narrow corridor that led to the loading bay. A cargo freighter was docked there, its engines humming quietly. This is your ride, Fen said. The crew will hide you in the cargo hold until you're clear of Martian space. Thanks, Fen, Boz said, clapping him on the shoulder. We boarded the freighter and the crew quickly guided us to the cargo hold. They stowed us away among the crates and containers, their faces grim. We'll keep you hidden, one of them said, but you'd better hope the corporation doesn't come looking. The journey to Earth was tense. We stayed hidden in the cargo hold, our hearts racing every time we heard footsteps above us. The crew was on edge, constantly monitoring for any sign of trouble. The freighter shuddered as it passed through the Martian atmosphere, and I felt a moment of relief as we left Mars behind. How long until we reach Earth? Reese asked one of the crew members. Three days, he replied, his face grim. We'll try to avoid any patrols, but there's no guarantee. We settled into the cargo hold, trying to find what comfort we could among the crates. Joran kept to himself, his eyes fixed on the data drive. We're so close, he muttered. We can't let them stop us now. Boz tried to keep our spirits up, telling stories of his past adventures, but even his humor couldn't dispel the tension that hung over us. We were heading into the unknown, and the weight of what we carried was almost unbearable. On the second day, the freighter's alarms blared, jolting us awake. The crew rushed into the cargo hold, panic on their faces. We've been spotted, one of them shouted. Company interceptors, get us out of here, Boz shouted, his voice rising above the chaos. The freighter shuddered as the crew tried to evade the interceptors, the engines groaning under the strain. We huddled together, clutching the crates for support as the ship veered sharply. Hold on, Joran shouted, his voice barely audible over the alarms. We felt the freighter shudder as it was struck by weapons fire. The crew fought valiantly to maintain control, but it was clear that the interceptors had the upper hand. They're going to board us, Boz shouted, his face pale. Despite the freighter's alarms blaring and the crew scrambling to ward off the interceptors, we managed to outmaneuver them just enough to escape unscathed. Boz's skill and luck, combined with the crew's determination, saved us from certain capture. After hours of tense flight, the freighter finally touched down on Earth. The relief was palpable, but we knew the fight was far from over. We disembarked in the dead of night at a remote cargo bay on the outskirts of a sprawling city. The air was thick with the scent of industrial waste and the low hum of machinery. We kept our heads down, following the crew to a secluded corner where we could regroup. Boz glanced around nervously, whispering, We don't have much time. 
The corporation will be tracking us, Duran nodded. We need to find allies quickly. We can't do this alone. We stuck to the shadows, slipping through alleyways and back streets to avoid detection. The city was a maze of concrete and steel, towering buildings casting long shadows across the narrow streets. We made our way to an abandoned warehouse, our makeshift hideout for the night. Who do we reach out to? Reese asked, pacing the room. Who can we trust? Joran thought for a moment, then said, There's a reporter I know. She's been trying to expose the corporation for years. If anyone can help us, it's her. The next day, we made contact with the reporter, a woman named Taylor, through encrypted channels. She arranged a meeting in a small cafe on the outskirts of the city. It was a risky move, but we had no other option. Taylor arrived wearing a nondescript jacket and sunglasses, her face lined with worry. I hope you know what you're doing, she said, sliding into the booth opposite us. We have something big, Duran said, handing her the data drive. This will blow the lid off the corporation's operations on Mars. Taylor plugged the drive into her tablet, her eyes scanning the data. Her expression shifted from skepticism to shock as she realized the gravity of what she was reading. This is incredible. If we can get this out to the public, it could change everything. That's the plan, I said, my voice firm. But we need to move fast. The corporation is after us, and they won't stop until they silence us. Taylor nodded. I have contacts in the media. I'll get this to them and start spreading the word. But you need to be careful. The corporation will do everything in their power to stop you. We understand, Joran said. We just need to get the truth out there. Over the next few days, Taylor worked tirelessly to disseminate the information from the data drive. She leveraged her connections in the media to ensure the story reached as many people as possible. The public was shocked as the details of the corporation's exploitation of Mars came to light. Protests erupted across the city, and pressure mounted on the government to take action. We watched the coverage from our hideout, the weight of our mission finally starting to lift. It's working, Reese said, a faint smile on his lips. People are starting to see the truth. Joran nodded, his eyes fixed on the screen. We've taken the first step, but this fight is far from over. The corporation will fight back. He was right. The corporation's retaliation was swift and brutal. They deployed their enforcers to quell the protests, and the media outlets that covered the story faced intense scrutiny. Taylor went into hiding, fearing for her life. They're desperate, Boz said, pacing the room. They know they're losing control. But they still have power, Duran replied. We need to stay ahead of them. We remained on the move, constantly changing locations to avoid detection. The corporation's influence was pervasive, and we couldn't afford to let our guard down. The battle had shifted, but the war was still raging. Despite the dangers, we continued to fight, spreading the word and rallying support. We found allies in unexpected places, from disillusioned employees to activists who had been fighting the corporation for years. The resistance was growing, and with it our hope for a better future. As the days passed, the resistance grew bolder. News of the corporation's exploitation spread like wildfire, igniting outrage across the city. Protests swelled and more people joined our cause, demanding accountability. Taylor continued to work from the shadows, coordinating with media outlets to keep the story alive. The resistance set up a secure communication network, and we worked tirelessly to coordinate our next moves. Boz took charge of logistics, ensuring that we had the resources we needed to keep pushing forward. Joran kept his eye on the bigger picture, strategizing and rallying the troops. But the corporation didn't back down. They doubled down on their efforts to suppress the truth, using their enforcers to intimidate and silence anyone who spoke out. It became clear that they were willing to go to any lengths to maintain their grip on power. One night, Joran gathered us in our hideout, his face set in grim determination. We need to hit them where it hurts, he said, spreading out a map on the table. Their headquarters is the nerve center of their operations. If we can disrupt their communications and leak more data, it'll deal a serious blow to their control. Boz nodded, his expression serious. It's risky, but it might just work. We've got to try, I said, my voice steady. If we can keep the pressure on, we can force them to back down. Reese agreed. Let's show them they can't silence us. We spent the next few days meticulously planning the attack. The corporation's headquarters was heavily guarded, with layers of security that would be difficult to breach. We knew we had to be smart, using every trick we'd learned in the resistance to outmaneuver them. On the night of the attack, we moved through the city under the cover of darkness. The streets were deserted, the air heavy with tension. We reached the perimeter of the headquarters, 
crouching in the shadows as we surveyed the scene. Let's move, Joran whispered, motioning for us to follow. We slipped past the outer guards using the cover of the trees to stay hidden. The building loomed ahead, its windows glowing in the night. Boz had hacked into the security system, disabling the cameras and opening a side door for us. Inside, the building was eerily quiet, the only sound the hum of the fluorescent lights. We moved quickly, following the map Duran had memorized. Our target was the central server room, where the corporation stored its most sensitive data. We reached the server room without incident, slipping inside and sealing the door behind us. Reese immediately went to work, plugging his laptop into the nearest terminal. This will take a few minutes, he said, his fingers flying over the keyboard. Boz kept watch by the door, his rifle at the ready. Make it quick, they could be here any second. Reese downloaded as much data as he could, his eyes scanning the files for anything useful. Got it, he said finally, pulling the drive from the terminal. Let's get out of here. We made our way back through the building, our nerves on edge. As we reached the exit, an alarm blared, filling the halls with a deafening noise. They found us! Boz shouted, raising his rifle. Move! We sprinted toward the door, but the guards were already closing in. They raised their weapons, firing at us as we ducked for cover. Go! Joran shouted, returning fire. We have to make it out of here! We fought our way through the guards, Boz leading the charge. Reese and I covered his flank, our weapons barking as we took down anyone in our path. The sound of gunfire echoed through the halls, the air thick with smoke. We reached the exit and burst out into the night the cool air filling our lungs. We ran through the parking lot, heading toward the alley where we'd stashed our getaway vehicle. Boz fired up the engine as we piled inside, the tires screeching as we sped away. I glanced back at the building, its windows shattered from the gunfire. We'd done it. Did we get what we needed? Joran asked, his voice tense. Reese held up the drive, a triumphant grin on his face. We've got more than enough. We knew the corporation wouldn't give up easily, they would fight back with everything they had. But we had dealt a significant blow, and the truth was finally out. There was no turning back now. We had struck a major blow against the corporation, but the fallout was immediate. The data we'd leaked was damning, exposing the depths of their corruption. Protests erupted worldwide, and governments began to take notice. But the corporation still had resources and influence, and they were not going down quietly. We regrouped in a safe house, watching the news coverage with a mix of triumph and apprehension. Protesters flooded the streets, demanding justice. Media outlets were abuzz with the latest revelations, calling for an end to corporate tyranny. Do you think we'll make it out of this? Reese asked, his voice tinged with uncertainty. We have to, Duran said, his eyes fixed on the screen. We've come too far to back down now. Boz leaned back in his chair, his face weary. They're not done with us. They'll come after us with everything they have. I nodded. We have to be ready for anything. The corporation launched a counterattack, using their media assets to discredit the resistance. They labeled us as terrorists, painting us as enemies of progress. But the public wasn't fooled. The truth was out, and people were rallying behind our cause. The corporation began to crack down on the protests, deploying enforcers to suppress dissent. The air was thick with tension and clashes between protesters and enforcers became increasingly violent. The streets were filled with chaos, the sound of sirens echoing through the city. Taylor reached out to us, urging us to keep the fight going. People are listening, she said over a secure comms channel. We have to keep the pressure on. We'll do everything we can, Joran replied, his voice steady. We continued to spread the word, coordinating with our allies to organize protests and disrupt the corporation's operations. Boz handled logistics, ensuring that we had safe passage out of the city when things got too dangerous. We knew we had to stay one step ahead. The corporation's retaliation was brutal. They targeted anyone who supported the resistance, raiding homes and arresting suspected sympathizers. The air was thick with fear, and we knew we couldn't stay in one place for long. We need to get back to Mars, Duran said one night, his expression grim. We can rally the resistance there and keep the fight going. Reese frowned. But what about the protests here? We've done all we can, Duran replied. The fight isn't over, but we need to regroup. I knew he was right. The protests on Earth were gaining momentum, and the public was demanding change. But the corporation's grip on Mars was still strong, and the resistance there needed our help. Boz made the arrangements, securing passage on a freighter that would take us back to Mars. We gathered our things, preparing for the journey ahead. The weight of our mission hung heavy over us, 
but we were determined to see it through. As we boarded the freighter, Boz turned to us, his face set in determination. We'll make it through this, he said, his voice firm. We faced worse. The freighter lifted off, leaving Earth behind as we hurtled through space. The journey was long and tense, but we knew it was necessary. Mars was waiting, and so was the Resistance. We touched down on Mars in the dead of night, the familiar dust swirling around us as we disembarked. The colony was quiet, its inhabitants keeping to themselves as the corporation tightened its grip, but we could see the glimmers of hope, the faint signs of resistance that still burned bright. Duran led us to a small camp on the outskirts of the colony, where a group of resistance fighters was waiting. Their faces lit up as we approached, relief washing over them. You made it, one of them said, a wide grin spreading across his face. We thought we'd lost you. We're here to keep fighting, Duran said, clasping the man's shoulder. We have a lot of work to do. The camp buzzed with excitement as we settled in, preparing for the battles ahead. The corporation was weakened, but their grip on Mars was still strong. We knew we had to be smart, using every trick we'd learned to outmaneuver them. The resistance was stronger than ever, fueled by the hope of a better future. We knew the road ahead was long and dangerous, but we were ready to face it together. The camp on Mars was a beacon of hope amid the dust and rubble. The people here had not given up despite the corporation's relentless grip. We found strength in each other, united by a common purpose. Duran gathered the resistance members in a small makeshift building, its walls lined with old maps and tactical diagrams. We have a lot of work ahead, Joran began, his voice steady. The corporation may have lost some ground on Earth, but they're still strong here. We need to keep the pressure on. Boz leaned against the wall, arms crossed. What's the plan, Joran? We need to focus on disrupting their supply lines, Joran said, pointing to a map. They rely on the mining facilities to fuel their operations. If we can hit them there, it'll weaken their control. I studied the map, tracing the supply routes with my finger. We need to find the weak points, I said. Where can we cause the most damage? Reese stepped forward, examining the map closely. Here, he said, pointing to a junction where several routes converged. If we can take this out, it'll cut off their supplies to the southern colonies. Joran nodded. All right, we'll focus our efforts there. Boz, can you handle the logistics? Boz gave a curt nod. I'll get it done. The camp buzzed with activity as we prepared for the mission. The resistance members worked tirelessly, gathering supplies and coordinating the attack. The tension was palpable, but there was a sense of purpose in the air. As night fell, we gathered our gear and set out into the Martian night. The cold bit through our suits and the wind whipped around us, but we pressed on. We moved through the barren landscape, sticking to the shadows to avoid detection. Reese led the way, his familiarity with the terrain guiding us through the darkness. Stay close, he whispered, glancing back at us. We don't want to get separated. We reached the junction just before dawn, crouching behind a rocky outcropping to survey the scene. The supply route was heavily guarded, with patrols moving along the roads. Boz peered through a pair of binoculars, his brow furrowing. They've got more guards than we expected, he muttered. Joran remained calm, scanning the area. We'll have to improvise. Cade, you and Reese take the left flank. Boz and I will handle the right. We moved into position, keeping low to the ground. The guards were alert, their eyes scanning the horizon for any sign of trouble. Reese and I waited for the signal, our hearts pounding in our chests. A faint whistle cut through the air and we sprang into action. We opened fire, the sound of gunfire echoing across the plain. The guards returned fire, but we kept moving, using the rocks for cover. Move up, I shouted, motioning for Reese to follow. We advanced toward the junction, taking down the guards as we went. The resistance members fought fiercely, their determination driving them forward. The air was thick with dust and smoke, the sound of gunfire filling the night. We reached the junction and began planting explosives along the supply route. The guards were closing in, but we held our ground, providing cover for Boz and Joran. Hurry up, Boz shouted, his voice barely audible over the gunfire. Joran set the last charge and motioned for us to fall back. Let's move. We ran back through the rocks, the guards hot on our heels. We reached a safe distance and Joran detonated the charges. The ground shook with the force of the explosion and the junction was engulfed in flames. We didn't stop running until we were well clear of the area our breaths coming in ragged gasps. We regrouped at a small cave, our hearts pounding from the adrenaline. We did it, 
Reese said, a grin spreading across his face. Boz nodded, his face set in determination. This is just the beginning. Duran glanced back at the burning junction, his eyes hard. We'll keep fighting, he said, his voice steady. We won't stop until the corporation is gone for good. The road ahead was long, but we were ready for the battle. The resistance was stronger than ever, united by a shared vision of a better future. The fight for freedom was far from over, but we were determined to see it through.